hello you are welcome to this tutorial on how to use GeoGebra to find the limits of a normal function like x squared and a piecewise functions GeoGebra is a powerful software tool that can help you visualize and understand mathematical concepts including limits so first of all let's consider the function x squared that is f of x so if you want to type the function just come to the command window over here and start typing there f of x then equal to x squared and you press enter right. so after pressing enter this is what it will appear on the screen so after the function has been graphed now we are doing or we are finding the limit of this function and therefore we need to analyze the function from both the right and the left in simple terms we are saying that we are doing both left and right handed analysis or we are doing some neighborhood analysis of this function s squared so in doing this we need a slider to do that so in order to create a slider so you go here there's a slider over there you click on it you will see slider and then you click anywhere on the screen now our slider we want our slider to be a or if not you can just do it like maybe noah right and say noah for your slider you can name it anywhere you want but make sure that you are comfortable working with it so in creating or in doing left-handed limit analysis we need uh numbers that are approaching that particular number from the left in such a way this function we are assuming that we are approaching a number two and therefore i can see that my minimum number can start from maybe um negative three since we are approaching two my maximum number can be 1.999 and then i can make my increment to be 0 0.1 let's say 0 0.1 right so with this i'll click enter and the slider will be created so let's move a slider and see whatever we have done is correct or nothing is wrong about it so in moving it to the left you can see negative three here here it's exactly two but we don't want it to reach the two the exact two so what you can do is that you have to go to view or options sorry and then round and then you go to change it to maybe five you can change it to something more than two right so you can see that it has changed to 1.999 so let's create the right handed limit slider right so it's still on the slider part so you just click anywhere on the screen and then my this okay I'll, I'll make it um okay let's remain it b right let's remain it b or oh, it depends i can see other c right you can see other c you can change any name that you want you can see other c and then since we are doing for the right handed limit that means we are looking for numbers close to two from the right and therefore i can't make my minimum number to be negative five so i have to make my minimum number to be 2.001 which is approaching two from the right and then my maximum can be five you can leave it there and then my increment can also be maybe 0 0.1 that seems 0 0.1 right let me turn that and then you press enter so it has been created so you can see that since we have already changed the rounding to about five decimal you can see that this one there is an exact 2.001 if not it should have been two right so that's how this one works so creating this you want to connect the sliders to the function or create a point on the function so that we can analyze the limits of the function right so in doing that we want to connect slider a to the function first and remember that the slider values are x values they are always x values right and then that is what is going to be used to evaluate the function value which will be the y values right so in creating a point we need two things we need the x value and the y value and here the slider is our x value so what you have to do is that you come to the command window down there you click um into brackets 
and then since our slider values are the a values we write the slider name is what noah for the first slider the comma and then f of noah right so let's press enter you can see that there's a point appearing on the graph you can see it's moving yes exactly so let's do the same for the second slider slider b which is other c all right that's the one that we are going to use for our right-handed limit analysis so in doing same into brackets since our slider values are our x values you type the other c and then you give it comma f of then you evaluate the function value with the slider values which is what other c right when you are done you click enter so you can move the slider and see the point on it yes you can move the slider and see the point on it you can see it's moving from there so now we are done connecting we are done connecting the sliders to the function so the next one is to create an x and y coordinates whereby we can use those coordinates to help us trace the path so that it will be easier for us to analyze the limits of this function right so in doing this you can do like um if i want to create a coordinate on the x-axis the y value should be zero right so if this y value is zero and then i have an x value it means that the point will be on the x-axis so you come to the command window then into brackets our x value for slider a is noah right and then you click command then zero you can see that there is a point created on the x-axis you want another point the same for slider a or slider noah right which should be on the y axis in this case our x axis value should be zero let's create another one for slider a so now the function value should be zero comma and then you do f of noah right it will be on the the axis so as soon as you move it you can see how it's moving so you can go to line select line segment and then connect it So when you are done, you can try and test this. Have you seen how it's moving? Yes, this is the correct one, the correct one. So we do same for slider B, which is other C. Now let's do that for slider other C. So for slider other C, let's create for it. You can do into brackets. Um, we are creating X components, so we are going to get other C comma and then you get um a slider name and then you get the y component should be zero you can see it will be created on the x axis and then you do same for um the y component so you do the x component will be zero and then f of uh other c that is slider name and then comma you can see it has been created and then you go to lines go to lines you go to line segment and then you connect them you connect them so when you are done connecting them you can move the slider and see how it's going right how it's going yes there's it so let's see how things will go all right so we are done creating the sliders so what you can do is that you have to add this one over here you can click on the line and then you can trace on you click on this line you go trace on you click on this line you go trace on you click on this line and then you go trace on so this is what you have over here so you can see that when you move it it will be tracing on when you move it you'll be tracing on that's how it works over here so we don't want it to be something like um yes so what we want to do is that we want to change the colors of this so that it will be somehow unique for us so we're changing this part to be blue and then we can change this part also to be red so that we can distinguish them when we do the animation on it now this is what we have 
So when you are done with this, you can close this one and then let's see how it goes. So now this is our function and we have created the left slider and the right slider and we are going to do the analysis. So let's try and do animation on it. All right. Okay, let's try and do animation on it. So in applying the animation, you click on the slider and then you go to animate on. And then you click on the slider, go to animate on. Let's see. This means that the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 will give us what? 4. You can see from the function value here, which is 4. Which is 4. Which is 4. Right? That's how things work. So now we are done using GeoGebra to find or doing the using GeoGebra to do neighborhood analysis of a function or the function x squared. You can go ahead and even record the values of um, the slider values and you know the trend of what value or what function value it is approaching. So in this case, you go to view, you go to spreadsheet, it will open over there and you go to the value that you want to record you click on it you go to record to spreadsheet it will start recording for you because i am animating it you can see that it has automatically started recording right it has automatically started recording the values and because it is repeating going up and down right you can see that it's giving me a lot of values that's how it is so you don't have to animate it while you want to track the changes you can do it manually or the way you want so that you can get the values for once so this is where our tutorial will end for today and we'll continue on next time